dog starts with an introduction to Kipus. These are the ropes that are knotted to record stories and our memories as we walk. I am from Bolivia in South America and the Incas were there before the Spaniards colonized us. Kipu is a Quechua word which is an Andean dialect. Many artists today are using indigenous practices as a way of reconnecting and reclaiming a different perspective and a different way of looking at the world. I have a number of ropes here, which I will now get out. You can knot it throughout. At the end of the rope, we will attach it to this fara. It will become the textile or text of our participation in POW 2022. I now have 22 of these varas, all recording different walks, mostly in Kent, and they are forming a little library. So today, Thread and Word welcomes you to our walk, Women of Our Soul. This is a walk with shared readings from the Chilean writer Isabel Allende's book in Spanish and English. This is a celebration for International Women's Day 2022. Hey! <laughs> brought to you courtesy of the Margate Bookie. Thread and Word is a walking group that I started in 2015. It takes its inspiration from the poem Hilo y Palabra by another Chilean artist. Cecilia Vicuña's Hilo y Palabra refers us to words and threads and how words can, can run the risk of becoming linear but can become vi vibratory in space and time which is what we hope to achieve through this walk with shared readings, moving away from the flat page into the lived experience. And the first shared reading, which I will read to you in Spanish, is Me gustaría tener los senos inflados y las piernas largas de Sofía Loren, pero si me dan a elegir, prefiero los dones de varias brujas buenas que conozco. Propósito, compasión y buen humor. The reading introduces today, us today to my good witches, who are all of you, full of compassion and good humour. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate International Women's Day than with you. Las mujeres que hemos vivido mucho, nada tenemos que perder. Y por lo tanto, no nos asustamos fácilmente. Podemos hablar claro, porque no deseamos competir con placer ni ser populares. Conocemos el valor inmenso de la amistad y la colaboración. Here Isabel Allende tells us about how as women get older, they don't need to fall into line with marketing ideas about competition. They can work together. And in that togetherness, there is enormous strength. No fear in losing out and speaking out because you are free of all the things that trap you through today's notions of ideal womanhood. In my youth, I fought for equality. I wanted to participate in the men's game, but in my mature years, I've come to realise that the game is a folly. It is destroying the planet and the moral fibre of humanity. Feminism is not about replicating the disaster. It's about mending it. As a result, of course, it confronts powerful reactionary forces. Feminism, like the ocean, is fluid, powerful, deep, and encompasses the infinite complexity of life. Like the ocean, feminism never stays quiet. Feminism is the es notion radical de que las mujeres son personas, como dijo Virginia Woolf. And that, where she's telling us, feminism is a radical notion that women are people. Me he estado entrenando durante años para llegar a ser una anciana apasionada, tal como otros se entrenan para escalar montañas o competir en ajedrez. And another form of writing, communication, communication so recording. In, in but that statue behind me there is a friend to all nations. I'm going to have a bit of a sobering read here, and it's Isabel Allende's references to being 
a refugee and the need for compassion. She says, un refugiado se alimenta de recuerdos y de nostalgia, con los ojos en el pasado, soñando con regresar a su hogar, pero el promedio que pa pasará lejos es entre 17 y 25 años. Muchos nunca pueden volver, serán siempre extranjeros. I read this with a heavy heart as I think about the people, mostly women and children, who are seeking refuge from Ukraine. Here Isabel explains to us that as a refugee, you feed yourself through memories and nostalgia with your eyes fixed on the past, always dreaming to return to your home. But on average, you will probably spend between 17 and 25 years away. Many never able to return. And as a result of that displacement, you will always be foreigners wherever you live. So I think here we could just stop for one minute and think about the people in Ukraine and those women and their children who are trying to find safe harbor. Uh, at night, the Turner has been lit up in the Ukraine, the colors of Ukraine, as a sort of expression of compassion, solidarity. I just can't believe that you both wrote a poem together, mother and daughter, in response to Isabel Allende. I think she would be over the moon. So it's just such a treat to have her here with us. And I've been working a lot with the center, which is a form of poetry that takes lines from other people's poetry and reconfigures them um, and reclaims them. So I thought this was a wonderful way to collaborate, both with both with Wendy, but also with Isabel Allende and all the poets that she references. And the, the title is Mending. And the fault wasn't mine, nor where I went, or how I was dressed. You still expect her to behave, you that coaxed her into shame. To be suddenly, once again, as fragile as one second, to feel things as intensely as a child, when you open your mouth and everything around catches fire. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. I will walk the streets again and in a beautiful liberated square will pause to weep for those who are absent. One thing I know about you is seeing anyone so eager to live. And the acronym for mending, I've got down as mindful, engaging, nurturing, decisive, inclusive, natural guru. <laughs> <laughs> well, kipu is a Quechua word and it has a very different perspective, a very different way of looking at life. So, for example, in Quechua, your past is in front of you because you know it. Your future's behind you because you don't know what's coming. And getting back to your point, this is why I'm saying this, the word in Quechua for complex conversation is also the word for embroidery. I've chosen a short passage towards the beginning of the book which describes how Isabel felt torn when she became a mother and was almost ashamed to admit she did not feel completely fulfilled. Miguel and I had two children, Paula and Nicola. I made a great effort to fulfill my role as wife and mother. I didn't want to admit that I was dying of boredom. My brain was turning into new soup. I imposed on myself a thousand tasks and I was running around like a poisoned mouse, trying to avoid confronting my fate. I loved my husband, and I remember the first years with my young kids as a very happy time. Although inside, I carried a burning restlessness. Yeah, that's my experience anyway.
tiny bird in the Central American jungle sports a rainbow of colours to attract an insignificant looking female. The male of the species is promiscuous and showy, while the female is plain. Ah, oh, the ironies of evolution. <laughs> when that bird thinks there's a possible girlfriend around, he chooses a spot with good light and proceeds to clean it meticulously. He removes leaves, twigs and anything else that might compete with him. Once the stage is ready, he stands in the middle, sings and magically creates a fan of fluorescent green feathers. The jungle vanishes out of respect for that conceited troubadour. In most of the world, a woman's value is tied to her youth and beauty. For any woman, it's difficult to navigate these waters. For most of us, it's a shipwreck. Beauty concerns almost all women in their youth. I barely survived that during the first 50 years of my life, when I thought of myself as not attractive at all. It's impossible to fit into the media in into the mould enforced by the market, the arts, the media and social mores. In our eagerness to adorn ourselves, we are tempted by trinkets or by the illusion that a new shade of lipstick might improve our destiny. On the back of mine it says, Cada año vivido, y cada arruga cuentan mi historia, which is every year lived and each wrinkle tells my story. Isabel Allende bucea en su memoria. Isabel Allende dives into her memory y nos ofrece un emocionante libro sobre su relación con el feminismo. So she gives us a peek into her relationship with feminism. El hecho de ser mujer, what it means to be a woman. Al tiempo que re, reivindica que la vida adulta hay que vivirla. And at the same time, she emphasizes that in our adult life, we need to live it, really live it. Sentirla, feel it, y gozarla, and enjoy it con plena intensidad. And that is passion, with total passion. They will have to live for us as we have lived for our mothers and carry on with the work still left to be finished. Very sanitised mm. compared to that. Mujeres del alma mía is women of my soul, women of my heart. It's not the soul of a woman. And that's why I'm so glad you all came. It's about all of us and our souls and how, how we, our passion and how we feel.